Hello everybody and welcome back to the Crafty Monkey channel. My name is Amanda and this is Rolo. In today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you some of my uh, completed craft projects. Most of these are going to be cross stitch or crochet pieces. I don't have a lot of the paper craft pieces to make because I make cards and I've given them away or they're stickers and they're in my journal. I don't want to show you by sort of what I've written down in my journal. Um, obviously this isn't everything I've ever made as I've gifted a lot of the crochet pieces away made them for people who I used to work with and their children and things like that but I'm just going to bring them up briefly and show you some of the things I've made over the years move right away to the way so we'll start with uh, this cross stitch piece this was a free gift on cross stitcher magazine uh, it was over three issues so you got a different part each issue and they were sort of holiday themed and they also included um some 3d elements so the first uh piece was this french lavender field and this has the purple beads and the second piece was sort of this uh greek island you had the bee charm and then the third piece was this sort of English poppy field and you had the buttons and it makes a triptych piece. Uh, I don't have a frame for this but this does live on one of my bookshelves. And then another cross stitch piece is this uh, David Bowie uh, Aladdin Sane piece. Uh, I found this pattern on Pinterest I think it was, it was a free pattern. Um, and this uh, is cross stitched. Everything I cross stitch is on 14 count Ada. Uh, so this is on 14 count Ada, and it looks like the cover to Aladdin Sane. Uh, David Bowie is one of my favourite artists. Um, I've been to the David Bowie exhibition. And this is uh, framed, this piece, and this piece lives on uh, also on one of my bookshelves. Then I have uh, this set of cross stitch pieces. Uh, this is another free gift that came from the cross stitch magazine. They gave you a calendar and on the back of each month there was a little chart. Uh, I cross stitched this one again on 14 count Ada. I didn't use the call for colours, I just sort of used um, floss that I had in my stash. And I uh, stitched each piece individually and then they are all on washers magnets this is an idea from uh, stitching with the housewives so i can change it out every month so and then it lives on this little gold plaque which hangs up in my kitchen so obviously because we're in march this is march but we have january february they didn't come with the months on them i actually uh, worked out the letters and cross stitched these on myself. March, we have April, May, June, July, August, September. October, this one's one of my favourite ones, November and December. And then I have uh, this piece, this was again a free gift, I think this was off World of Cross Stitch magazine and it's just a little home sweet home with some flowers in uh, an embroidery hoop. Obviously like that and then this props up again on one of my bookshelves then I have this piece this is a Lizzie Kate uh, alphabet string these are quite hard to get now you can't get uh, these um, I don't think Lizzie Kate are in print anymore uh, I found it on eBay I think um, but so obviously it's all the letters of the alphabet but this one is dog themed and then it is attached to this sign by some ribbon. 
and it says a small dog lives here so this is obviously to represent Daisy who you've met in some videos and this hangs off um, the side of my uh, craft cart and this was just finished by gluing it onto a black piece of board then I have this cross stitch piece this is um, one of the Stitching with the Housewives designs uh, in collaboration with Hands On Designs. These were called, I think they were called Chalkful, uh, and they were a series of mason jars with uh, different things in them. This is the very first one, this is the sunflower jar. It's stitched on 14 count black Ada, and they use classic colour works, but I use DMC because I don't have. Classic Colour Works is hard to get hold of in the UK and DMC is more readily available. This is not completely finished. Uh, I was trying to finish it in a way that um, Priscilla from Stitching with the Housewives finishes things. So I've got this white board that I paint, uh, I think it was an Easter sign that I painted white. And then I've got the stitching stuck to some cardboard and then onto, uh, and then stuck onto another piece of cardboard that's been decorated with black and white stripes. Um, and then I was, I've got to glue this onto the board and then I bought some sunflowers to sort of put at the top here to finish it but they don't look right and I haven't been able to find the right thing as soon as I find the right thing I'll know and I can stick this down uh, and then finish it off and then this will hang up uh, this is a series um, there's a Halloween one there's a Christmas one uh, the Halloween one is pumpkins the Christmas one is Santa's and there's snowmen Easter bunnies, and there's daisies, and then there's uh, like a Liberty one, like a 4th of July one. But I was just going to sort of stitch it and then sort of take out anything sort of relating to um, Independence Day because obviously we don't celebrate that in the UK. It's that piece. I have a couple of home decor items. Uh, I made this piece uh, for my boyfriend uh, a few years ago. So this, I'll just bring it up, this is an MDF, MDF heart that I've covered with a piece of paper and then I've run around the edge the Distress Ink and then I've uh, printed on to some paper. This is actually uh, something that he wrote for um, a novel that he wrote. So this is a piece from that and then I have these uh, roses and this butterfly and these were made by melting down embossing powder uh, ultra thick embossing powder pouring it into a rubber mold wait for it to cool turn it out you can do the same thing with hot glue and so that's decorated and that he hangs up by his books then i have this folio that i made uh, i think this is from i can't remember the brand they're on they're on the craft store, I think they're stamp addicts um, and they have this template to make this folio so you've got the plastic template, this is handmade paper you've got all the ribbon and everything so this, this opens out and then you've got like a little a little notebook that slots into a pocket here This is just card covered with handmade paper that folds up. So you could make these out of any paper. This was the paper that came in the kit, but this would also work for a lot of the graphic 45 papers. Well, you do need. You're going to need 12 by 12 papers though because it is quite a big template. And then this is one of my sort of early examples of having a go at doing home decor or mixed media. So this is a piece of grey board 
that's been covered in um, it's Harry Potter themed paper but the collection is not Harry Potter it's wizarding paper um, I can't remember where I got it from I think I got it from a big craft shop in Eversham somewhere um, but it was all sort of Harry Potter related um, and so obviously because I am a Gryffindor so this has been decorated with Gryffindor colours and then this just sits on my bookshelf sorted in behind um, I have a Hedwig uh, snow globe and this sort of just sort of slots in behind there and then these are some of my Amigurumi crochet pieces uh, this is a little uh, Cthulhu uh, who is a monster from HP Lovecraft's um, mythos I suppose is the best word uh, he's a sort of giant old one that sleeps under the Antarctic and uh, this is a little sort of cute version of him he's sort of meant to look a little bit like a squid this and he's got the tentacles and he's even got some little little wings on the back this uh, I made for my boyfriend because he's a big Cthulhu fan and then we have uh, this piece this is a baby alien <laughs> it's baby Yoda uh, the pattern says baby alien uh, I copied this off I am um, a tutorial that was on YouTube uh, so you make the little alien and then you make his coat separate so he's you know he's got a full body under there this was the very first one I made I have made another one I made one for a friend and I bought bigger safety eyes and it does look a lot better with the bigger safety eyes but I had to work with what I had at the time and uh, this sits on one of my shelves. Uh, this was back before you could get um, Grogu or, you know, Baby Yoda merchandise. So there was a lot of patterns out there. But he's very cute. I like him a lot. And then we have this piece. This is quite big, so this is going to be quite hard to show. But this is one of the first big Amagurumi pieces I made. Uh, the pattern was off a youtube channel which i can't remember what the youtube channel was and there were sort of like how to videos there and that linked you through to a blog for how to make this dragon he was made in lots and lots of different pieces so you start with his head so you've got you've got the ears and then the eyes like the eyelids were all made separately the nostrils he's got a bottom jaw and then all the back pieces that go all the way down his tail the tail was a separate piece to the body and then the feet and then his belly was another separate piece and then his hands and then the wings were also two separate pieces that you had to crochet back to front you could do the mirror on the other side So this piece, so this, uh, I called him Dougie. Uh, I don't think that's his name. That's the name I decided to give him. Um, but this was, yeah, one of the most complicated and biggest pieces I had. I had to have a checklist so I could remember um, the order which I was making them and make sure I'd made everything correctly. That piece. So then we have this uh, Amagurumi piece. This is a fox. This pattern came from a crochet magazine. Uh, he's very big. Uh, he's got a massive tail and then he's got quite a big head. Uh, he's made from an alpaca blue tweed wool. Uh, obviously the pattern, he was, you know, a regular fox. He was sort of orange and white, but I had this tweed wool and I thought it looked really cool. I didn't really know what to do with it and then sort of, in my head making a blue fox um seemed logical uh but i'm really pleased with how he came out i think he's really cute uh so he's got the face here and he's got his little nose and i'm really pleased with how this piece turned out even if it isn't in traditional colors 
and he sits on top of my bookcase because he's quite a big piece. And then I have this crochet piece. This is from Butterflies, Bugs and More, which is a crochet book. And it, it's made all in little separate pieces. So it's also to teach children about um, the evolution of a caterpillar. Uh, so you start off by making the sort of caterpillar body. And then you make the little hat that goes on top, which gives them a little antennae. And then you make the butterfly wings. So I used some sparkly wool for this. It sort of has a, an ombre effect, which I thought worked quite well. And you crochet this band and then that fits through. And then you can put the wings on. It sits like that. So there's that piece and then there is uh, this crochet piece uh, I made this uh, for my boyfriend as a little Valentine's gift this was a free pattern from Instagram uh, so it's a little bear the uh, pattern had him in uh, brown uh, wool but I hadn't got any brown wool I'd only got this sort of charcoal grey um, which I had left over from making the jumper so I uh, crocheted him in that and then I had this um, red sparkly wool to make the heart he's a little cute little cute bear and then there is uh, this piece uh, this also came from a free pattern on Instagram. Uh, I think it's Poppy Crochet. I'll put the correct name at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and the, her patterns used to be free, but she started selling them on Etsy. Um, but this was, I had this one when it was a free pattern. And this was her Mexican doll, so it's sort of Frida Kahlo inspired. So you have this piece. The thing is, is this is top because the head is big this is top heavy so um if you were going to make this i would probably put a support in the neck um because the head does flop on this one but it, it is a cool design so you've got like the little roses and leaves the hair is made uh, as like a cap that you crochet and then fit on top and then we have the body and then her skirt is sort of made up of these tiered ruffles with different colours on the edge. And then the legs and then the boots. I, I used some of the cold forced colours but I sort of also went with what I had. So I had some of this sparkly navy wool left over that I used for the body. And then I just used some red and yellow that I had in my stash. And then I put a piece of... Uh, lace ribbon around the neck sort of you know, make it look like a necklace so if I turn up so as you can see that's quite a quite a large piece that then this is my latest finished cross stitch piece I finished this about two weeks ago uh, this was in cross stitcher magazine and this is a sort of like a Liechtenstein uh, style cross stitch piece. This, I changed what it said in the uh, speech bubble. It did say, uh, how many stitching days left till Christmas or, or something along those lines in there. Um, but I took that out and just put gasping, which is sort of like what you see on uh, his paintings. And, uh, it's the full coverage here. Uh, in two colours and then on the face uh, it's sort of every every other stitch going down sort of give it the dot effect from his uh, like his paintings so there's that piece uh, which I'm really pleased about this was great what I did with this piece is I did all the black so I did all the outline first and did all the black and then filled it in 
um, I found that to be a lot easier. So sort of, you know, outlining it, then you could just sit and fill. It's that piece. And then I have this uh, folio where I keep uh, some completed diamond paintings and some cross stitch pieces that I don't really know what to do with yet. Um, so I saw them in here. Hopefully you can see these uh, without me having to take them out. So this is a diamond painting of uh, Totoro from my neighbor Totoro or Totoro. And then a uh, David Bowie diamond painting. Sort of like a rainbow effect. So much black, there was so much black on this one. And then a galaxy space themed one. I like doing diamond paintings. I find them relaxing if I don't really, yeah, because with cross stitch you have to do counting and things like that. Whereas this you just sit and you put the dots on and I do find it quite relaxing, but I don't really know what to do with them once I've done them. Um, but so uh, they get stored in here. Uh, I'm gonna just move that over slightly because it's got the light shine on our face. And then this is sort of like a Mother of Dragons type one. And Jessica Rabbit. I said this is all, all diamonds, it's all drills. Then we have this Chihuahua, this is a part drill. Uh, so this background up here and here, this is not diamonds, it was just uh, the chihuahua that is diamonds. And then we have this other Totoro one. And then I have this, let me just see if I can move it up in there. have this small uh, sunflower piece it's meant to sort of look like a chalkboard design and then this is a cross stitch piece uh, so this is another hands-on design designed by Priscilla from Stitching with the Housewives and this is her uh, I think it's Sunflower Manor piece then I have this fairy design uh, this was one of my earlier pieces uh, got this out of a cross stitch magazine I think it was all in pinks but I decided to do it in purples and then three um, Day of the Dead sort of themed pieces. Uh, these were in, also in a cross stitch magazine, I can't remember which one. Um, and there were three designs. So there was this cat, there was this little bird, and then this uh, sugar skull and flowers piece. Uh, then we have this Then we have this a little chihuahua cross stitch piece this was a Christmas present um, my, my boyfriend bought it for me because he said it reminded him of Daisy and the saying is pretty apt for Daisy as well this uh, cute little chihuahua on a cushion Then I have this piece. This is um, a Halloween piece that I bought. I bought the pattern from 
uh, one of the big craft shows when I went. So it's all sort of boxes and then sort of words around the edge. And then I have that I have this cross stitch piece which is um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This came out of a book called Geek Craft and this was actually a parlor bead design. You know those beads that you would put on a board and then you put wax paper over and you run the iron over and melt it. Um, but because it was gridded up, um, I thought it would make a cool cross stitch pattern. So I sort of just copied the grid and turned it into a cross stitch pattern. So this is Buffy from season one. Uh, this was the famous picture that was released uh, as publicity pictures for season one of Buffy. Buffy is my favourite TV show of all time. Uh, I'm really proud of how this turned out. As if this was a long piece, it took quite a while to do. So another piece that I've made and finished is this blanket. This is a corner to corner blanket and it hangs over the back of the chair in the dining room. This is, I did, I think it was 10 rows of red and five rows of cream. And it's corner to corner. It's quite a big blanket and it has tassels on it as well. That hangs over the back of the chair. So then I have uh, this corner to corner blanket that I made. I've just laid this over the coffee table. This was actually the very first blanket I ever made. I followed a pattern off YouTube. And this is, this is, this is well worn, well used. Um, I gave it to my uh, boyfriend, he loves it, it's one of his favourite blankets. So this has got five rows of like the turquoise, five rows of the sort of purple, and then five rows of the grey. It's just a sort of standard corner to corner, I like the corner to corner. It's the blanket style I use, uh, pattern style that I use the most. Then I have uh, this blanket. Uh, this is done in a sort of chevron style. This is the second blanket I made, and I made it a different style. I said since making them, I've discovered that I prefer the corner to corner method. You get tighter stitch, and I just like the way it looks better. But this is uh, white, like pale pink, and then like a mauve colour. This is um, long and narrow, whereas the corner to corner will always give you a nice big square. And we have uh, this blanket. This is more of a sort of patchwork style. Again, this is done with corner to corner, but each square is uh, crocheted separately. So you've got these sort of cream squares and all the way along the edge. And then you've got these colored squares five different colours. These were made with a wool that is inspired by Pantone paint colours. So we've got that one. And then we have this blanket, which is again corner to corner squares, uh, but done in a pinwheel effect. This was quite an early on blanket because you can see um, I hadn't learned how to uh, invisibly join properly. I've, I've learned how to do that better now, but this blanket is still useful. So I sort of did a pinwheel with a lilac, a dark purple and a cream. And then we have this rainbow stripe corner to corner blanket. So this has all seven colours and each row is seven rows. This one's quite bright, quite cheerful. And then we have this shawl. This is a dragon wing shawl. Uh, I bought the pattern from a shop on Etsy. I'll put the name in the on the screen 
and this is all crocheted and you had to crochet these dragon wings and it has this large a bit in the middle and then you have the same on the other side it is hard to show but turn it so you can see but i used a pink and grey sort of ombre effect wool and it does have a sparkle in it for this for the wing section and then just black in the middle so this is quite a big piece so I'm going to just slide it across the coffee table so you can see it uh, I've also made a corner to corner blanket which I gifted to my nan which she uses in the care home uh, so obviously I don't have that there is a small corner to corner blanket made out of like, like that type of chenille wool um, that Daisy uses but she's lying on it at the moment so I can't show you that um, and I also have another cross stitch piece which I can't actually find um, that I finished not that long ago but I'll insert a clip now uh, a photo of it now so you can see it and another piece I just want to quickly show is this steampunk skull that I made this came as a kit and it's MDF and last of Paris So you got the kit to do the whole thing. So these cogs are made of plaster of Paris. These cogs are made of MDF. Spinning round. The stand is MDF, and then the skull itself is plaster of Paris, and then the hat is MDF. And you got everything. You got all the paint. You got all the gold gilding. You got the leather to make the goggles. You got the mirror pieces see here's a mirror so then you've got all the mirrors so i've taken the hat off and so you've got all of the gilding and everything and this comes a kit that i bought from the craft store he does he does lean slightly and that is my fault um when i was gluing the base together the base slightly sticks to the bottom so it's not flat on the bottom so he lists slightly to one side um he should be like this i'm holding the base up now um, but that's just my fault from how i held it when i was gluing it this is quite a cool piece it's got ultra thick embossing powder on it and he's really cool so that's just a quick overview of some of my finished craft projects uh don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time bye Thank you.